you'd be shocked to learn that the technology and specifications we use in today's road cars are largely derived from or have been inspired by many innovations that started from Formula One. Stick with me and I'll give you a quick rundown on how F1 technology is used in today's road cars and also how this tech has affected the automobile industry in general. It's no surprise that the technology used in race cars is being adapted to road cars, since a couple of the automotive brands like Mercedes, Ferrari, McLaren, Renault and Honda that are in one way or the other involved with F1 racing also produce road cars. In Formula One, to be the best you always have to come out on top, simply having the best driver is not always enough. To come out on top, you need to have the fastest car and bring together the best parts. Every season, each team is always trying to beat the others by developing new technologies that ensure they cross the finish line first. F1 teams are constantly innovating, and it is no surprise that some of that innovation ends up in everyday appliances. Keep watching to discover all the greatest developments. The first one is the Hot V engine. The engine found most recently in the newly rolled out Porsche Panamera is a beast, especially for speed lovers. There has been quite an argument about who first introduced the Hot V. Some publications say BMW, but earlier reports show it was first used by Ferrari in its F1 program in the 1980s. A Hot V engine guarantees speed. It has its exhaust ports pointing inwards, the opposite direction to a conventional setup. This means that the turbos are much closer to where the combustion in the engine is occurring, rather than being bolted to the outer sides of the engine block. The Hot V wasn't quickly taken up because of the heat it generated, and cooling systems weren't fully advanced at the time, but it has now been resurrected by the Mercedes-AMG GT. Because of how complicated the engine is to use and maintain, it is primarily used on performance-based luxury vehicles. The next one is active suspension. Suspension on a car is simply a system set up on the wheels of a car so that a car ride goes smoothly, regardless of the road conditions. The suspension also protects the vehicle itself and any cargo or luggage from damage and wear. This was the basic purpose of the suspension in cars, but as time changed, it evolved especially in its use in racing cars. The active suspension was first used in 1992. While several other companies had used active suspensions before, Williams' team was the first to truly get the best out of it, using hydraulic actuators while cornering. The system provided a smoother performance and even helped to increase downforce and speed. Nigel Mansell won the World Championships that same year and with the aid of this technology, was able to win nine of his 16 races that season. Though the tech was banned in 1994, as part of a raft of changes designed to eliminate driver aid called gizmos, it is still being used in domestic cars today. Anyone driving a car with an active suspension that can be altered by pressing a switch should be grateful to Formula One. Did you know your brakes can create the electricity that your vehicle needs to run? This process is called KERS, Kinetic Energy Recovery System. This is a creative way introduced to recover energy created by the excess heat generated during the braking process. When a car brakes, it immediately disengages and then starts running backwards. The transmission is still in drive, so it doesn't reverse the wheels. Instead, it acts like a generator, capturing the kinetic energy from the wheels as they slow down, and converts it into electricity. This electricity is now used by cars to generate extra power. This technology introduced by F1 is now commonly used in today's electric cars, motorcycles, and even bicycles. The double overhead camshaft engine was actually invented by the Fiat Group in 1912. It is responsible for operating the intake and exhaust valves that bring in the fresh air and expel exhaust gases, respectively. The introduction of the double camshaft made room for improvement in cars. It allowed car makers to add multiple valves to each cylinder, and this increased the efficiency of the valves. This technology is now used by almost all road cars. The best part is that the F1 teams are already working on something more advanced, experimenting with operating the valves by electromagnetic and electrohydraulic actuators. 
it would first be tested on race cars, and we hope that this tech finds its way to road cars. Let's see how that pans out in the future. Steering wheels were developed by Formula One teams. Well, not exactly that, but they were improved by the manufacturing teams. This means that while steering wheels have been around as long as cars, all they did was just steer. Yes, it's as boring as it sounds. If you drive a modern car, I'm sure you can't imagine a steering wheel without all the buttons. Buttons on steering wheels were initially introduced to F1 in the 1970s, but did not become a thing until the 80s and 90s. This technology was introduced for convenience. Imagine a race driver driving at 300 km per hour, looking for buttons. Sounds like a hassle, right? So the car manufacturers had the idea to put the buttons on the steering wheel to make it easier for the drivers to push the required button without getting distracted. The buttons on a steering wheel now come in almost all vehicles recently produced. In road cars, they help you perform functions like changing the radio channel, picking up calls, altering the volume, adjusting cruise control, and a lot more. Rear view mirrors are also something that seems like an essential car part today, but they haven't always been there. In the early history of car racing, long before F1 officially started, then at the inaugural Indianapolis 500 race in 1911, Ray Haroon mounted a rear mirror on the front of his car. The idea behind it was that unlike his rivals, he did not have to have a second driver in the car, which meant less weight and more speed. The rear mirror served as an eye at his back because he could see all that was going on behind him. His plan certainly worked as he went on to claim victory. After that, the rear mirror was introduced and used in Formula Racing and later in F1. Can you imagine driving your car without a rear mirror? I don't, but maybe in the future, cars will only have cameras. Carbon fiber chassis were first introduced in F1 by McLaren team with its MP4-1 model in 1981. This material had previously been used in small components, where its lightweight and strength were appreciated, but McLaren took the concept to a new level. Carbon fiber is known to be the best material to be used for car parts to increase the performance. As carbon fiber is really expensive, it is now used mostly in high-end road and luxury cars, such as Mercedes, Porsche, BMW, and Aston Martin. One of the first road cars to feature a carbon fiber chassis was the Mercedes-Benz SLR McLaren. Finally, all racing cars in some form are using diamond-like cylinder coatings on their cylinder walls to reduce friction. It involves the deposition of ultra-hard carbon-based material. Depending on the material's configuration, the resultant film displays characteristics that combine the hardness of diamond with the lubrication of graphite. Seeing how efficient the technology is, this form of lubrication has been transferred into the more expensive production cars over the years. The Ferrari 458 launched in 2010 is one of the first examples. Formula One tech is also being used in other aspects of everyday life. The processes and software that guide pit stops during races are being used in various industries to increase production and efficiency while also maintaining the optimum standard. F1 technology is also used in hospitals. McLaren's systems are used to monitor patients' data and sensors are also used on surgical teams to provide feedback as they carry out their duties. Formula One is not just motor racing. It delivers progress and moves the whole world forward. Do you know what else has brought progress? Drinking coffee. I think I'd like to have a cup now. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe and I would be super grateful if you would also support the channel on the Buy Me A Coffee website. That way, we can continue making these videos for you. See you next time.